Recently, I had a problem with Caden Life, and it was a big problem. It crashed a lot, and that is not a great experience when you are editing a video for like a half an hour. You've done all this work, and then all of a sudden, the app just goes away. You have to hope and pray that it will recover your work. Now, I've got I got really good at saving my work after every time I've made like a cut or something like that. So I was hitting the Control S keyboard shortcut all the time. But you shouldn't have to do that. I mean, you probably should do that, but you shouldn't have to do that because you shouldn't have to expect that your app is going to crash. So, Canon Live has been a pain in my ass for a couple weeks now. So, I decided I was going to move away. You know, like, I'm done with this nonsense. I'm going to go through and find myself a better video editor. And the first one that I tried is Shotcut. So, I've been using Shotcut now for a couple weeks and I have some thoughts. So let's go ahead and jump in. So this is what Shotcut looks like out of the box. I've done no customizations really in terms of UI. Now you can go through and edit the like the windows and the modules and stuff just like you can in Caden Live. Uh, I found that it wasn't quite as good at moving stuff around as Caden Live and also just like Caden Live, the, like the grab handles to make things bigger and smaller aren't always the easiest to see. So it works best if you're using a dark theme like this. You can actually see some of these things where you can go through and you drag in things to make them bigger and smaller. But on the white themes, uh, these aren't as easy to see. So that's that was my first problem. Now, I'm not in love with the UI, but then I wasn't in love with the UI of Caden Live either. I, I was able to get past the... I don't know, this kind of feels very, I don't know the word, it's not a very good designed app, or a very well designed app, I should say. It just, it sometimes feels like they were trying to do this with like, touch support enabled or something like these huge ass icons and stuff, just, I don't know, it's weird. The UI is just not something that I was really all that interested in. Now, that being said, it wasn't unusable in terms of interface. You know, it's, I was able to use it and be happy using it for a while. So it's not like the UI was so horrendous. It sent me running off in the other direction. That's just, it didn't do that. So th that's the first thing that I was had to get over. The second thought I had was that this is not a great multi-track editor. Now, I think that's because it's meant to be a linear track editor. Like, you're supposed to, like, cut things up and put them all on one line. Now, you can do multi-track. Like, I could go through here and do track operations, add audio track, and then I can go through and drag my video or my audio to here if I wanted to do so. And then, you know, that's fine. And that's the way I've been working because I always have multiple tracks. I always record these videos in OBS, and I also record the audio in Audacity. That gives me a backup of the audio, just in case OBS craps out or Audacity craps out. I always have some way of having the audio recorded. It's just the way I've always been doing things, and it's the way I probably always will do things, just because it, it just seems to work for me. But Shotcut does not do multi-track stuff well, so in my editing process, I'd go through and line up the audio and the video, just like you normally would. I I do this with you know claps, and then I would remove the audio from the main track here. So you can do that by doing more detach audio, and then you get a, another audio track. And then I can just go through and delete this. Now, being able to detach audio is a key feature for any video editor, and it's one that I would definitely always have to have, and it's there. The problem comes is when I said I go through and deleted this and I've synced these things up. That's just, I mean, this isn't synced up, but it doesn't really matter. If I wanted to go through and select both of these, you can't do that. You can't select both of them and do cuts. You can't group things and cut. So if I wanted to group these things, like if I want, if I was in Caden Live after I've detached the audio from the main clip and then gone through and added the audio that was separately that I wanted to use, I could go through and regroup them. That way, when I made a cut, like say I wanted to cut this, I could, it, in Caden Live, that would cut both the audio and the video in the exact same spot. 
in Shotcut, you can't group things together, so I have to cut these twice. So I have to select this, cut this, and then go up here, hit the shortcut key again, and then cut it again. So I have to, it doubles the amount of work I have to have. That was by far the biggest pain I had using Shotcut. Now I understand it's not like, it wasn't the end of the world. Like I could do this, and I did do this for the last two weeks, but it's just one of those things. Like, like I, I want to be able to group this stuff, and sometimes I got to the point where I hit S is the key binding to do a cut where the the line here is, right? And sometimes I hit S and cut the video, and then I let it keep playing, work into my workflow. And then I'd hit S again, or I for have forgotten that I didn't actually cut the audio, or I just cut the video, and I'd have to go back through and try to line these up precisely, because there's no real snapping. There is snapping in the the this application, but there's not snapping for the timeline scrubber. And I, so I'd have to align those things up exactly in order to cut the thing that I forgot to cut. That's just a pain in the ass. And... It's not something that I could see myself being okay with long term. I'm not a professional video editor by any means. I'm not really I'm reliant on a software being able to do a ton of fancy things, a fun, ton of fancy transitions and stuff like that. I, there are like four or five things that I just needed to do. And this is one of those four or five things and it's not there. So between the lack of really good multi-track editing and the lack of grouping, Shaka kind of wrote itself out of its place in my life. And the other things that I needed to do, like, for example, I have these two green screen clips here. They're, they're the little roll-ins you'll see at the bottom to subscribe to the channel and to su support us on Patreon. Patreon.com slash LinuxCast. And Shotcut does support these well, and it actually supports them better, I feel, than Caden Live does. So I could go through and add another clip here and drag these over and basically what you do is then you select this and hit the filters thing and then you add the filter and you're going to search for chroma in this case and you're going to do chroma simple and then you can go through and do the color that you need and it would work just fine if you haven't subscribed we just hit 2000 subscribers and i'm <laughs> super excited about that now I like that way of doing things because it allows you to go through and put the filter for the chroma on just that clip. So I could go through and add it to that clip. I could add it to the subscribe clip as well. And it just affects those clips. That means I can use that track for other things as well without having the chroma affect it. So in Caden Live, at least as far as I'm aware, you have to go through and add the chroma to the entire track. And that's not great. So, like I said, that's as far as I'm aware. It's the way I've always been doing it. It's the way I learned from a YouTube video to do it. So, you know, that's just the way Kaden Live does things. Now, that's not a big deal because Kaden Live allows you to do a ton of multi-track things a lot better than Shotcut ever will. So, it's not a huge deal when I have to add an extra track to add the end scene or whatever. Because it's just, you know, add an extra track and put it in there. Whereas this... It just doesn't feel conducive to actually doing multi-track editing. So another thing that I like about Shotcut is that when I've gone through and created a, let's just say here, I've cut, I've cut this, I've done a cut here and, done, and I've done a cut here. So I've now cut both of these things. If I wanted to go through and do a cool transition, like a fade in Caden Live, I'd have to go through and do this thing here with the, with the pull tabs or whatever to do the fades, and you can do that with Shotcut as well. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a second. But what's really cool is I can actually go through and overlap these, and it will go through and do a fade, you know, by itself equally fade. So if I go through, I'm just gonna go ahead and mute this here. Actually, I think that just makes it louder. I don't, let's see if it actually go through and show you. Is NC spot, so NC spot. So I didn't actually go through it and, and uh, choose a good spot for that because they're actually there's actually no difference between here and here but they're actually the same image basically but basically what that does is go it goes through and that does a cross fade it's really cool i really like that the other thing i liked about the fades so if i just if i line these back up here and let's say i wanted to fade between this one and this one as you can see, as I drag this fade thing here it actually tells you how long the fade is so like that's one second five 
1.5 seconds, I think, is the way that is, right? 1.05 seconds. And you can do the same thing with fades. That way you can go through and make your fades exactly the same. So that's something that Kden Live doesn't do. When Kden Live, you do the the fades, it's just a handle, and you have to kind of guess exactly how the fade in fade how long the fade in fade out things actually last. Now I know that information is actually somewhere in the UI, but the UI of Kden Live is kind of you know bloated, so finding it is kind of a pain in the butt. Now. That was a lot of stuff on, on Shotcut. Now, my overall thoughts on it are that it's okay. The lack of the ability to actually go through and group audio and video together, at least that I've been able to find. Now, you got to remember, I used it for two weeks and couldn't actually find it, but it doesn't mean it doesn't exist. It just means that I couldn't find it. So if it's there, you know, it just means I missed it. The, but the seeming lack of that is a big deal for me. It's, it's, the, it's a deal breaker because... I go through and I always have an audio and a video track. I need to go through and group those together so that I can cut them always at the precise spot equally every time. And I don't have to go through and sometimes accidentally, you know, forget to cut one part of it and then have to go back and try to line them up exactly precisely or whatever and try to get them to actually go through and be perfect. Now, obviously, I say perfect, but none of my videos are perfect, but I would at least like it so that when I cut the video and edit audio, they don't somehow get out of sync. That, you know, that'd be the most annoying thing ever. So I can't use shotcut for that reason. Now, if anybody knows how to group a thing, uh, tracks together in shotcut and I just missed it, let me know in the comments below. Do you use shotcut and maybe you have a better way of doing things? Uh, let me know in the comments below. So thank you for watching. You can uh, follow us on Twitter at the LinuxCast. You can follow us on Facebook at the LinuxCast. And you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash LinuxCast. Levels 2, 3, 4, and 5 get early access to our videos most of the time. Sometimes they get posted right to YouTube, but most of the time I try to stay ahead of myself and actually post them to Patreon first. So if you're interested in doing that, patreon.com slash LinuxCast. I'd like to take a moment to thank our current patrons. Devon, Marcus, Meglin, Donnie, Sven. Merrick, Camp, and Mitchell. Thanks, everybody, for your support. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.